you've got it, and it turns out a lot of people with this hobby have got it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence. It really is um, a privilege, isn't it, that we can do these things. Definitely. It's therapeutic. I. Hi, Josh. Hi, George. How are you doing? Great, mate. You? Really good. Thank you so much for inviting me. No problem. To make a video with you and your beautiful aquarium. And we first met at Riverwood. Yeah. Aquatics. Yep. Got chatting with you and Mallory. Yep. Shout out to Mallory. He's going to probably. Hey, watch Mallory. This, isn't he? Is he, escape, is he escaping? He has. He's got two. Has he? Yeah. What He's got. A big fluval tank, okay. and he's also got a 60p. Nice. Good. The 60p is nice. Better than this? No. Sorry, mate. <laughs> and also, thank you for helping me with the vlog. You were my cameraman. Yeah. That, that was good fun. Yeah, it was good. You sent me a photo of this a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll come over and make a video. Yep. So here we are. <laughs> is it Aquascape for 600? Yep, 600. And there's a bit of a story behind the actual tank, isn't there? Yeah. It used to be... Pete's original tank. I skate with it. Yeah, you have, yeah. yeah. You skate this actual tank. Yeah, and uh, that was five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's in good condition. Yeah, it's just got a tiny chip out the back, but... Yeah, it's not really scratches. No. It's the original Aquascaper, which was EA, even yeah. Aqua, and now it's owned by a different company. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful scape, I'm sure everyone at home uh, would agree, and a yeah, testament to your hard work and diligence. How old is it? How long has it been running? Um, it's been running eight months. Eight months okay. now. Yeah, it's really settled in. And yeah. Got that nice balance. You can see the plants all thriving. There's bits of algae here and there, but I actually quite like. I'm that. quite happy with it on the hardscape. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. I I don't mind it on the hardscape. It adds, adds a bit of. Uh, authenticity yeah, it does. to it and um, I, I, I often think about making a video about algae but a different type of video yeah. about how we should just accept it mm -hmm. for what it is and uh, as long as it's not visually distressing you, yeah. um, it's okay and you know what your kind of tolerance yeah, is. Yeah you've got to have a tolerance. Yeah. I don't I don't like it too much on the plant. No. If I get a bad leaf that goes. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because I think um, if you do get algae on the plant, that means the plant isn't so healthy. Mm -hmm. Algae generally only attaches itself to either something that's dead yep. or unhealthy. Yeah. I think there's a theory that unhealthy plants kind of leach a certain chemical which will attract, attract more. The algae. So, yeah, good idea to rip that leaf off, whatever, or the stem, and then hopefully look, address the cause of it, yeah. and then hopefully it'll grow back and yeah. be fine. You very rarely find algae on healthy plants, and that's the that's the kind of like the test kit. You don't really need a test kit because no. the plants are, are the they test are kit, yeah. you know, the health of the plants. The plants, the fish. Yeah. And yeah, you very rarely find unhealthy fish in a healthy plant tank as well. Definitely symbiosis going on. Speaking of the fish, you've got some beautiful ember tetras, and then is it a, a pistogram? Yeah. Is it a McMaster? Right? Yes. There was a pair. But top tank. Unfortunately, the female. Yeah. It's kind of inevitable sometimes to yeah. get fish out of the rivulets. Although now you probably wouldn't, because you've got so much coverage, you'd be unlikely to see any jumpers, I'd say. They never really paired. Uh, I wonder if they chased it out. I then. think the male might have chased her out. Dominant, yeah. Yeah. Kind of check, yeah, probably stressed it out. Yeah. The light things are uh, Chihiros, WRGB2 Pro. Programmable. Yep, app controllable. Um, ramp up, ramp down, um, set all your times, adjust the, the spectrum. You've got presets on there. Okay. Um, I've, I've manually adjusted this to my liking. Okay. Um, and also where I think the plants are actually enjoying the light. Mm -hmm. um, it was previously running a Twinstar 600S. Yeah which I bought when I bought the tank. Okay, yeah. But I wanted to change something so it was my own. Yeah, that's right. So. What intensity are you running it on? Um, it's about 55 watts. Okay. So it's still quite intense. There's a lot, because the, the twin starts 45, I think, at, at max. Yeah. Um, and it's, what's it, 74? 74 watts. Uh, potential, yeah. you're running at 55. Yeah. 
I don't think it needs 74 watts, not with a lot of slow growers in here. Yeah, you don't have any demanding stems or no. stems that would benefit so much from that. And I mean the lilies are really pink anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a real beautiful mixture of plants, we'll talk about those in a minute. You're running an external filter of course with the lily pipes? Yeah. It's fairly tidy. Oh, we've got a Biomaster 350. 350. Yeah. And pressurised CO2. Yeah. You have that come on before the lights? Yeah, three hours prior. Okay, and what sort of bubble will count? You mm, about three bubbles a second, okay. I think. Quite a lot. Yeah, it's quite a lot, but there's all, it's got to get round here. Yeah. And it's, it's very dense with a balance at the back, yeah. so. Oh, I've just seen the celestial Caldania. Yeah. Uh, they do tend to be quite cryptic. Yeah, there's about the three in there, I think. Nice. Any special means here in the filter? Or you? Um, no, it's not standard. There's matrix. Okay, so you can mention. Um, but that's that's it. Cool. And fertilizers? APT complete. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's popular. I use mm. that as well on my big tank. It was a hard transition. Was it? Yeah, so the skate previous to this, I was running TNC complete. Right. Um, obviously it's a little bit higher in the nitrates yeah. and yeah. um and I tried transitioning the old scape over to the APT. Okay. I don't think it was overly happy. Suffer, they did a little bit, yeah, especially at the bottom of the stems. They, they were get not not like the leaves. They were getting a bit mushy. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, if the plants sort of adapt themselves to a certain nutrient yeah. condition. Then, uh, so when I, it was only probably a month after I transitioned over to the fertilizer that I decided that I was ready for a rescape anyway. Yeah. So this tank has only ever been run on APT complete. Nice. That's doing its job, mate. Definitely. Yeah, you've got a real eclectic mix of plants. You've got the Junkers Reppens in here. Yep. I think it's the densest bush I've seen of that. <laughs> What's the crypt? It's beautiful. Is it that, or? No, that is Pink Panther. Is it? Yeah. It's not very pink. No, uh, I think it might be the, to do with the light. Yeah. Uh, Pissadin's Fontanus Moss. Yep. Is this Anubius Jade? Yes, it is. Yeah, I recognise that. Yeah. It's uh, quite a rare one. And then uh, this is uh, Caterina, is it? Or I don't know if that's needle leaf. I think it's needle leaf. Okay. I'd have got that donated off the heat. Okay. And then you've got just regular Anubis Petite? Just Petite, yeah. yeah. Most of it is Petite, apart from this piece here. Okay. Uh, what's the boss there? Christmas moss? No, that is weeping moss. It's, okay. it's kind of found itself there, though. And a lot of the fissidens you see has yeah. found itself. Yeah. So the hardscape that I had, some of it had some, like, it was from my garden, which has been out there for a while, oh, okay. and it was dead. Yeah. And I put it back in the tank and it grew again. Like, it does that, doesn't it? And it kind of broke off and it's found its own way. Yeah. Uh, quite a lot over there. But I like it, it's really yeah. attached. And, it's like a happy accident. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's just like nature takers course. They can't miss the lilies. Nymphia lotus. Yep. Do you have to sort of trim that quite frequently? Quite a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. I've just put my hand in there and pluck it right from the bottom. Yeah. And within three weeks, the leaf that was right under it yeah. has come straight up. So It's a real kind of focal point to it, isn't it? Yeah. It's really beautiful. And then you've got the crisp, crisp patina or balance. That's balance, yeah. yeah. And do you have to trim that? I just pluck that straight from the bottom. Yeah. Um, you, you Quite any, often, actually. Straight runners. There is a runner. There was a runner over there yeah. the other day. Yeah. I didn't want it over there though, no, so I have taken that, it out. It does send that, and sometimes you'll get them pop up in random places. Yeah. That's quite funny. And then you've got the uh, hydropotal tripod. Tripod Yeah. Some Java fern. Is that regular fern or is that? Like That's just regular fern. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit of windelof mixed in here. Oh no! Yeah, I can see that. Um, there's a bit of bulbitis at the top as well. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. it's beautiful. Is that one piece of wood or? The main piece of wood, apart from this piece at the front, is one piece, which is this piece and the piece that comes towards you. Yeah. That's all one piece of wood. And then I've just kind of stuck a few pieces within this. There's two really massive pieces of series stone under it. Okay. Oh yeah, I could see three. Um, which I kind of wanted it to be over and you could just see some pieces through the wood. Yeah. And then I just used, um, these are snapped off pieces of manzanita wood. 
Okay. That um, come in a pack. What, what soil are you using in the pack? Tropica. Um, but I did double up. I've got um, Tropica substrate oh, okay. underneath. Yeah. Mainly this side, really. Okay. For the crips. Right. I knew what I was going to be putting in the back there, and I they're quite heavy root feeders. Yeah, that's right. So there's about an inch worth of one one of the small bags underneath the Tropica soil mm -hmm. powder I use. Four ground you got. ADA. Colorado. Colorado. So yeah, that's the ADA aqua gravel. Yeah. And then some series paint chip. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a hammer outside and yeah. broke a few bits off. I hope you used high protection as well. Yeah, I did, like this. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been skating that? Because this is a skin of I've been fish keeping slash plant keeping yeah. for four ish years I suppose. Okay. This level of aquascaping really I would this is my first oh, wow. level like this. What is it about aquascaping? Just bringing a piece of nature inside my house, yeah. having the peace inside my house. Yeah. Um, it's therapeutic. I really do look after it once a week. Yeah. That's my time, you know, my daughter goes to bed. Yeah. Um, and I just get my head in it for, you know, it doesn't take long. 45 minutes to an hour yeah. and that's my time and you know with it, with it being so low maintenance yeah. any time I do come back into my house yeah. I know it's going to be looking good. Yeah. Do you enjoy consuming it like enjoy watching it and maintaining it more what, what is it about it? I like all of it. Yeah. Um, I don't the only thing I ever dread is cleaning my lily pipes. Hate, I did I yeah one of the lugs that holds the pads on I didn't use um, like boiling water to soften the pipes right. and I tried pushing it straight on and it snapped um, and I've not done that since yeah. I'm very careful I boil the kettle once they're clean okay. and bring them back in yeah. but I'd, I enjoy doing everything yeah it's a great hobby isn't it I mean there's so many in my mind there's so many different elements to it you know you've got the sort of the creation stage, the planning, the, you know, choosing the hard stuff, yeah. coming up with your planning plan, yeah. and then actually building it, yeah. you know, getting your hands dirty, getting your hands in there, playing around. That's what I was really, when I when I did rescape to this, that's what I was really dying to do. Yeah. I wanted to rescape, yeah. but now, to be honest with you, I don't really know where I'd go from, from this, inside this tank. No. I think the next thing would be is to get a, Probably a 900, I reckon, or a 90, a Waze, something like that. Yeah, yeah, nice. Three foot. Where would you put that? I would put it back here because obviously we've moved the yeah. we've moved oh, the chair, yeah, haven't okay. we? Yeah. Um, I've yeah. got I've got another got foot, room. I think. Yeah, perfect. Have you ever done the Lagoon? Try rock over there. I haven't. No, never. Right. Yeah. It's just uh, obviously more minimalist. Yeah. Once you've done it, it's grown in. Something like this. Because you've got so many more species of plants, potentially more complex design. Yeah. There's more room for manoeuvre. Yeah. Like, and you still content with that aspect. Of yeah. Day. Whereas with a minimalist irigumi, there's only it you either know, looks right or wrong. Wrong, yeah. Thing. So I prefer the chaotic, almost like the wild, chaotic kind of nature of this style yeah. versus irigumi. Yeah. What I like about this is it's it's kind of evolved itself, you know. We spoke about the fissadens earlier, but there's some pieces of moss up here that weren't put there, yeah. and they've really taken to the top of the wood. Yeah. Yeah, um, nature knows best. It does its own thing. I guess we, as the creator and the maintainer, we just have this guiding hand in the journey, don't we? Yep. You know, and, uh, I think that's part of the joy. So you, you don't have a specific kind of end goal in mind with how it looks, you just let it evolve. Yeah, I'll just keep letting it evolve, you know. Absolutely. Things are probably going to die off in the long run that are probably, what I'd say, not supposed to be there. Yeah. Um, I had that at the start. That Junkus Reapens has only been in there five out of the eight months. Okay. I started with, because I wanted to reuse some of the old plants that were in my old scape. Yeah. And what I was growing Pacopa in there. Okay which it did look really nice, but it ended up taking over. And with Bacopa, it kind of does what the Blantoi does. It actually shoots no, underneath oh, really? and up. 
and it was going everywhere. And yeah. the regular the coat was there covering the arm. Yeah, it was quite a broad leaf yeah. on it. Um, it didn't really. I wanted that fine texture against the Blantz eye, and uh, I went and got some advice off Pete, and he said, "I think Junkers Reppens," and I don't think he was wrong to be honest. No, that's probably the best use I've seen in it. It's not that popular. A lot of people use it within other plants, so they've got like sprouts coming out. Okay, yeah. I've seen that quite a lot, but I wanted to just go for the for the dense bush. It's the only plant I really have to trim in this tank. Oh, okay. Yeah, yours, you just sort of I've plucked the rest. Yeah, yeah. I've not really trimmed many leaves off the Anubius at all. No. Yeah, you've got very little algae on the Anubius, which is a good sign. Yeah. I think it's to do with the shade as well. Yeah. It's very shaded on the front. Yeah. I think it's a good example of using shadow mm -hmm. in escape. So a lot of people assume it's so bright. bright everywhere, but mm -hmm. I think there's a real benefit to having that contrast yeah. in escape. And, um, the fish seem to enjoy the shadow as well. Yeah. I mean, you can see the epistogram yeah, now enjoying the. Have you got a little Siamese algae? Just one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he keeps some of the algae about. Yeah. They get too big and they start getting a bit hungry for food though. They do, yeah. They do best as juveniles. Yeah. It doesn't nibble the moss, that's what I found sometimes. You no. Nibble the he might be the reason some of that moss has gone yeah. in other places though, yeah, I suppose. Maybe. I like it when it moss. Like, can you see here where it's just, it's just, just stuck to the wood, yeah. And what I've done in my tank at home, it's going for like 60. I've done Tied on Java moss mm -hmm. and then with AGA moss cotton, yep. which actually rots away and leaves, leaves just leaves it stuck yeah. to the wood. And then deliberately pull away big chunks. And then all that's left is bits like that. Oh. And then as it grows, you just any stray strands that come off, you just pull off. Take them and off. Eventually, you just get this super dense, like compact. It would be stuck to the layer, wood. Yeah. There's a few pieces of that happened around here actually yeah, as well. Like He's got very big. You have family, you have your young yeah. daughter. Yeah, she'll be two in September. Does she take any interest? She loves it. Yeah. When she was a little bit younger and she first got on her feet, she wanted to grab them pipes. Yeah. So I had to sort of put her toy box in front so yeah. she didn't. But Reach. now, she feeds my fish for me every morning. That's great to get involved <coughs> and uh, get to appreciate you know, what we're doing. Definitely. Sense of, I don't know, really, at the moment, but you know, it's a sense of responsibility. Yeah. I think it's really important caring as living things. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. We were chatting in the, in the cafe earlier, and I, I didn't realise you had ADHD. Do you mind just talking about that? Yeah, no, that? of course. Yeah, because um, you messed I released my video, you know, my life update yeah. about, you know, I've got ADHD and then. You've got it, and it turns out a lot of people in this hobby have got it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence. No, we're all meant to be. I think it's an, uh, a kind of natural source of therapy. Definitely. For us. I think there's something to do with, with uh, a combination of water, um, having something to give us focus, yep. and something that's relaxing. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, it's. Yeah, I think it's Hours, and I, in your own know, little zone. Yeah, and I just you forget time. Yeah. Sometimes I forget to eat. You know, just, yeah. Put my you know, always cancelling earphones on, headphones on, and uh, yeah, getting the zone. It's just nice to come home from. You know, I've got a busy life with work, and to come home to this is nice. Yeah. Does the wife appreciate it? Yeah, she does like it. She does really like it. She gives me pointers. She reckons things don't look right sometimes. Yeah, that's good. yeah. She's she's taken to it now. Yeah. Scary thing to... having water though, isn't it, in a house? I think that's at first. Yeah, it is, a, and it is a big item of furniture. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's an important. It's a big impact on you. 
it's living space. Yeah. And if it doesn't look good, then no. And that's, I think that's part of the perceived problems with aquariums. Uh, there's still that perception that they're kind of, you know, potentially ugly, bulky, for, for the out, out fluorescent gravel, yeah. looking a bit cheesy. Crap. Yeah. yeah and, you know, it's important that kind of the furniture sort of matches. Yeah, it, it blends pretty well into here. You can do that now, and there's so many different styles of cabinets now. Even if it's tiny little nanotank. Nano I did have one. It used to sit on that unit over there. Yeah. But that was a little bit too much maintenance for, for my liking. Yeah. They're a lot harder to maintain, I, yeah. for me personally. Yeah, they can be because they're, they're, they're not stable, are they? No. You know, and the evaporation they did evaporate quite a lot. Yeah, so they can be quite stressful. Yeah. Um, so depending on what plants you've got, obviously they can outgrow it and really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see how long I'll keep this. It'll do well. I think as long as they do nice for six months. Yeah. I think that's what they're there for, though. They're there to keep your mind busy, yeah. to be able to change yeah. frequently. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, I often talk about like, you know, long-term versus short-term aquascaping. Uh, yeah, there's something for everyone. There's something that it's almost just to tinker around yeah. at the time, or someone just wants something long and slow. Yeah, I well. think they're good as experimental, like to see what plants you could maybe grow, what you're capable of growing. Yeah. yeah I mean, the good thing about this stuff is because you've got the light, you can see it too. The whole system's geared up pretty much, I think, geared up pretty much for any plant. Yeah. Nearly. We've got pretty hard water around here, though. Yeah. I do soften it up with a little bit of RO water. I've got a 25 litre drum, okay. and half of that per water change is what I put in there. Yeah. I wanted to keep a pestigramma. Um, I struggled with rams before, yeah, they needed um, I, I lost a few due to the water parameters I believe, but could be that, could be they weren't yeah maybe that, kind of yeah, but the male is doing really well in here. What fish food do you use? Um, tetra, okay. I believe, just micro granules oh, and yeah. then I just chuck a couple of well, uh, algae wafers. Yeah. Um, there is shrimp. They do seem to hide a lot though. Yeah. There's some uh, cherry shrimp in here somewhere, unless they've been be nabbed off. Slowly, be yeah. Okay. There's some big. One of the Amano shrimp, that's the one. Um, one of them I've had since nearly day dot from me, and it's big. Yeah, they, and they, it's probably bigger than the epistogramma. Yeah, wow. Yeah, they, they are long lived, 10 years plus. Uh, I see them when they. When I've done a water change, they do come out. Yeah. They seem to like the fresh yeah. water. Perlant-sized perlin. Perlin off, yeah. The side of the leaves. I find that absolutely fascinating with the perlin. You know, it's pure oxygen. And that's, that, that process there, what we're seeing, is actually what's keeping everything alive on this planet. Yeah, basically. oxygen. Yeah. yeah it feeds the, you know, it's responsible for the bacteria, some fish, shrimp, the snails, plants themselves need oxygen as well. I find that real, really kind of connecting. Yeah. So we're part of that. And we're all part of the, the same thing. Yeah. You know, and, that, and you kind of get that reflected, that whole process is, is kind of concentrated in this little beautiful box. And then when we're responsible for that in terms of you know designing creating maintaining that said you know all the processes that are going on and uh, we have we have no control over that all we have control over is to an extent the aesthetic yeah and then ensuring that we create the environment to hopefully optimize the health of everything yeah keep so the plants you know, happy enough light to keep the plants photosynthesizing balancing that light with the co2 yeah and then Balancing that with the fertilizers, yes. choosing the right plants. It sounds quite com a complex task, but if you get those fundamentals right, you know, enough light, CO2 if you need it. Good right, ventilation. Yeah, Good right ventilation. plants, right fertilizers, right circulation, right maintenance. Isn't it? I think that's the big thing. Maintenance. Yeah. People are proper people, maintenance though, proper not, maintenance. Just not just the draining the water, yeah, filling it back up. You know, when I get my hands in there, yeah. I get my hands really in yeah. there. Yeah, you can learn to love the maintenance. Yeah. And you, 
it's almost like it's about finding a way to make it easier it used to be difficult because I used to empty it into buckets. like a 30 litre big bucket cart it outside tip it out and do it again but now I've just got like 9 metres of hose yeah, I drain it straight into the garden I water the plants with it um, you know fill a jug up to feed on my house plants yeah. and then I've got like my tap in my kitchen is a mixer tap yeah. I've got a hose adapter that goes onto my tap yeah. get it to a nice temperature yeah. you know there thereabouts yeah. fill it up and then I just have to manually tip in some RO yeah. and that's it um, what sort of percentage are you changing? I'd drop it to about there about seven, yeah, yeah easily yeah it is about that. It is about making it easier, and then yeah, also enjoying the process rather than the outcome. Yeah. You know, so not fixating yourself on having this perfect looking aquarium. No. But if you fixate yourself on just enjoying the here and now of it, yeah. And then the the byproduct is that it looking beautiful, and yeah. you can enjoy that as well. But if you if you're only going to enjoy it if it looks perfect, then you, you're setting yourself, yourself up for like, being unhappy. Yeah, I think I was kind of a bit like that with one of my first. I was, you know, focused on yeah. getting it, worrying why it isn't looking too you know, good. And it, I did suffer with cyanobacteria quite bad. That side you're on now, yeah. build up in the substrate and it'd go all over the plants. Um, Obviously, it's only a 350 ORZ on here, so what's, what are they, 1,000 litres an hour? Yeah, and with probably the media, media. Probably, less than that. probably 800, yeah, 700. Yeah. So obviously, I've got this big piece of wood, and the plant side is very dense. Yeah. So it'd go round, and I think it was stopping. Yeah. And the circulation yeah. weren't going that way. So I put a little 350 litre an hour pump, okay. just got it off Amazon. Um, what's the just, power head, is it? Yeah. It's just a little box. Yeah. And slowly but surely the cyanobacteria went. I used a little bit of treatment. Um, Prophoto. Oh, Blue Exit. Blue Exit, that's yeah. it. Yeah. You say it was coming on this side? Yeah. Because it got the quickly treated by the natural. Yeah, most probably. I believe all cyanobacteria starts off in the substrate. Right. And if you have enough light, it in the substrate, it'll find the blue glass and that'll trigger the. Once it gets into the open water, because yeah. it's photosynthetic, it's actually not an algae, it's a bacteria, yeah. it's a photosynthetic bacteria. So, yeah, it gets basically triggered by excess light, excess organics. Yeah. You even got like what some folk call pest snails, other plant snails, but they're not out of control, are they? No, I take well, a few of them out yeah, every now and then. But they don't seem to be breeding. I don't overfeed the tank, no. so they're not. They actually do some good, you know, they don't, they don't carry disease or anything, they eat, they eat, they eat food, they yep. eat algae a little bit, they eat the tritons to an extent. It's only when they come visually, you know. Yeah, if they took over the tank, yeah. it'd be different. How long do you envisage keeping this tank running for then? I'd like to see another year out of it. Yeah. I'd like to do 18 months. Uh-huh. Would you, like, evolve it by swapping plants out? Or you just, Maybe. Yeah. I just want it to evolve itself. There's quite a good mixture of plants in here, I'd say. Yeah, there is. Um, I think the Junkers Reapings will need replacing eventually, just because it's quite dense and it probably will die towards the bottom. I do, I do trim it fairly frequently, you know, monthly, six weekly, just to keep it kind of. A, I'd like it. I like it to be sloped towards the back. There is a little bit of Cypress Health Ferri in the back there as well. I don't know if you can right. quite see it. I never really had success with that. It, was, it took a long time to transition. Well, I think it's a little bit of a weak plant. I think, I don't, yeah, I think it prefers to grow out more than yeah. what he's really high CO2. But there's a few pieces in there that you probably can't see. The plant I smothered it. I had staghorn algae. Where was that prominent? Everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah, it really took over the first couple of months. But that was probably me put my hands in disturbing Sinking things around, yeah um, I kept changing obviously that the plants over that side um, didn't really leave it alone to be honest with you but it went it kind of went on its own I treated the water column a little bit with you know like a co2 booster um, not too much just like a like a meal a day 
Um, but I don't have to do that at all anymore. I just dose my ferts every, every day. Three pumps. And uh, yeah, two pumps. Yeah, that's the recommended for the water volume. Obviously, I don't think they quite know how many plants you're going to have in no, there. Of course. But I don't think it needs any more. I think everything's looking fairly lush. Thanks for everything you do for Me? the community. Yeah. Oh. I wouldn't have got into it if it weren't for you, you know. Lockdown 2022 was a boring time. It was. And that's how I sort of found aquascaping. Is it? Yeah, in lockdown. Oh. Just glancing through YouTube. And I suppose you just come up in the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah, great for that. A lot of people got aquascaping on through lockdown. Yeah, it was a good time, obvious. I think. Yeah, it was We spent a lot of time at home. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have stayed in the hobby. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't quite have the funds for something like this oh. in lockdown. You know, work slowed down, and what do you, what do you do? I'm a support worker uh -huh. and a barber, oh, okay. so I do a bit of mixture of both. Yeah, but you know, Facebook Marketplace is a great world. <laughs> so is that how you found this? Yeah, yeah. Repeat. That no, fun? I one of Pete's customers. Oh, okay. You know, he bought it off Pete. I bought it off him. Yeah, it is. It's five years old. I mean, the silicon works still looking really good. Yeah, the plants themselves are super high quality. Cabinets are a little bit sketchy sometimes. Yeah, it's not too bad. This one's good. Yeah, it's not too bad. We had a tiny little bit of water on the bottom. You know, these side pieces peel off. But yeah, they do the job, don't they? Get them fairly cheap, so. Where, where can people find you if they want to follow you? Do you, do you post any of your escapes on social media? Yeah, Instagram, yeah. Yeah? At Josh Scaper. Oh, I'll leave a link. You can get escaping and barbers. Yeah, that'll be cool. I think that'd be so cool getting your hair cut and just enjoying it. Yeah. I suppose the only thing, it'd probably have to be a closed top tank because of the hair. Yeah, that's true. You wouldn't want hair floating in there. For me, it's about the connection. You know, the nature. And it connects people as well through the hobby. Definitely. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for lunch as well. No worries. And thanks for filming uh, the vlog. <laughs> Can't wait to edit that tonight. Oh man, that was awesome. Awesome. Cheers, Cheers mate. Cheers, mate.